Thank you so much, Bern, for the nice introduction. And thank you, Bern and Stinka, for inviting me to give this talk. Um, I'm very honored and delighted. And I'm still reflecting on the Vivian talk and thinking how to do this bridge between the macro and focusing on a more specific service which I'm going to talk about because uh, we're going to talk now about psychotherapy, which is a very one specific kind of service. And with, a, with, with my aim in mind is to, um, uh, to strengthen the relevance of this service for people with serious mental illnesses and talk and do make do an overview on the current trends in psychotherapy practice, but in research in psychotherapy as well. So we can think how we can promote and enhance the way we study the effectiveness of psychotherapeutic interventions with people with serious mental illnesses. So I'll share my presentation. Okay. So just a to presentation outline that we'll have in mind where we are going, uh, where we're going to. So briefly, I'll introduce uh, uh, the historical background of psychotherapy and serious mental illnesses. I will then talk about the updated approaches and the critical elements or characteristics that we have in the current approaches. Um, and then I will talk in an elaborate way on research methods and I will give a specific example of a trial, ongoing trial that we have here in our community clinic. And I will try to conclude with future directions, suggestions for future directions and challenges in the study of psychotherapy for persons with serious mental illnesses. So just to keep in mind, uh, people with serious mental illness, the debates whether they are, um, are the right candidates for psychotherapy is a long debate. Well, Freud argues that they do not have uh, insight or do not develop transference, and therefore they are not candidate for psychoanalysis, which was the popular psychotherapeutic approach back then. Uh, we, although he stated that there were case reports of psychotherapy with persons with serious mental illnesses that showed significant improvement and showed the ability of persons with serious mental illnesses to develop for relationship, interpersonal relationship with their therapist. Research did not those uh, case reports and they were considered anecdotal reports without uh, uh, regarding their seriously. Um, and psychotherapy was in the backstage then because there were no research uh, or evidence supporting it. It only came back to the front stage in the eight days of CBT with certain models of, that showed symptom reductions and uh, with very impressive results. This was the uh, basis for the development of many protocols uh, based on CBT interventions that goes beyond symptom reduction, that targets other outcomes such as functioning or even subjective outcome while using CBT uh, interventions. Um, sorry if I don't move in my office, the lights turn off. Um, okay. And in lately, there is an acknowledgement that CBT cannot provide the answers to all different challenges that people with serious mental illness cope with. And acknowledging those limitations, along with uh, accumulating research, showing challenges in this experience of the self, in reflection, in mentalization, all those led to the development of more integrative approaches to psychotherapy. And these are considered today uh, most popular and lots of research on psychotherapy with serious mental illnesses focused on integrative approach. Why integration? because people with serious mental illnesses have multiple needs, okay? So we aim for symptom reduction, but also to provide social needs and met needs. We want to also promote skills. So we want to do skill enhancement, but we also want to facilitate 
more a sense of agency and self-coherence. And with those multiple needs, we don't have one approach that can provide the answer for all those multiple needs. And we have the diverse desirable outcome that we can categorize as clinical or functional or more subjective type of recovery. And we have uh, an acknowledgement, as I said, of the limitation of different approaches and a promotion of a more tailor-made approach to psychotherapy. We are now more than ever recognized that there is a need for more than training in certain skills. We also need to address the self-experience and we have research showing us that we need to address those uh, uh, reflective abilities that challenge the self-experience. Trying to um, locate which uh, elements are more critical in those integrative approach and what should we include when we talk about integration in psychotherapy, there were several attempts to discuss and review different approach in psychotherapy with serious mental illnesses. I won't mention all, but just to, to get an impression, so uh, a review of Jay Ham and colleagues showed that there are different critical elements in, in, in different in, in diverse integrative approach. And it conclu they concluded that there is a more reflective dimension, like social cognition, okay, more in, uh, interpersonal or intersubjective or attachment. There is an element which relate to the interpersonal um, part of the therapy, and also the different ter integration integrative therapy also emphasize narration as an important intervention in a special issue on, on integration in psychotherapy for persons with serious mental illnesses, Paul Isaacer and David Rowe also emphasized that there is a need to uh, uh, meaning making to be made jointly between the therapist and the clients. And this meaning making is also a process that highly relates to narration techniques and reflective abilities. So those uh, examples of discussion and um, uh, statements were, uh, along with many others, led to uh, those three elements be, being the focus of different integrative approach. So if we talk about psychotherapy integration, when we work with people with serious mental illnesses, they usually address reflection which in some approaches are called metacognition, in others mentalization, and in others social cognition. They also emphasize nar narration techniques, which includes meaning construction and integration of different experiences that the person has. But it also includes the, the relationship component, the therapeutic alliance, interpersonal relationship, intersubjectivity, attachment, all those concepts under this in, included in this cate category. So if we keep in mind those three uh, elements, what I would like to do now is to show that if these are targets to be addressed in treatment, I wanna show evidence that these are challenged for people with SMI. Why should we address reflection, interpersonal, and narration elements. Why should we include this in psychotherapy? I want to show that these are challenged. And I also want to show that if we do include them and we do use integrative approach for psychotherapy, these are more uh, effective than using a one singular approach with this, which, does not in, uh, which is not integrative. So also I, I cannot, because of time limitation, I cannot include all data. So these are just examples. But first let's look on evidence for special challenges for people with SMI with regard to reflection, narration and interpersonal uh, domains. So this is a meta-analysis showing um, uh, social cognition is a great challenge for people with SMI. It, con it concludes with the statement that despite the limitation of existing studies, including lack of standardization, et cetera, 
the evidence for deficit across multiple social cognitive domain in schizophrenia is clear. Another meta-analysis conducted in my lab with my PhD uh, students here in Nitsan showed that metacognition is a great challenge for people with serious mental illnesses. Sorry, this is specifically uh, with regard to schizophrenia. So people with schizophrenia struggle to think about themselves, about others, about their place in the world, and they are challenged with using those this reflective uh, knowledge in order to cope with different crises or problems in their life. We also have uh, uh, more uh, discussion and papers that review and uh, different literature on what should we include in a recovery process, not specifically in psychotherapy, but let's talk about it in the framework of psychotherapy. So this is a paper in World Psychiatry by Paul Isaacer and Bethany Leonard, and they write, and they went, and I, those are three uh, quotes from the paper emphasizing the narration, the interpersonal and the reflection elements that I noted before that I think should be included in integrative approaches to psychotherapy. So they write to recapture agency can also however refer to regaining a larger experience of ownership and authorship of one's thoughts, feeling and action. By understanding the intersubjective requirement of the experience of agency, we can see that legitimacy of subjective accounts of well being. And they continue to emphasize how the authorship, the intersubjective, and the reflective nature of the recovery process should be enhanced. Okay, so these are the three same elements that were mentioned before as being included in integrative approaches to psychotherapy. So this, this, these are um, empirical data supporting that there are challenges in these three components. But now let's see what the psychotherapy research literature shows us with regards to these three components. Um, popular today are approaches that are based on mentalization or cognition. In the left, it's an in-press just um, in press this month, a book uh, I co-edited with Paul Isaacer about metacognitive and mentalization-based uh, oriented psychotherapy for people with psychosis. And, and the right uh, side of the screen, there is one example of one paper. There are more uh, reviews on different metacognitive approaches to treatment of psychosis. And, and the, there is accumulating research if you do like a search on medication and psychotherapy in the last year. So it's really increasing and increasing more research and more understanding that psychotherapy should address the component. Uh, Meta-analysis show the benefits of referring to interpersonal component in psychotherapy. This is one uh, with regard to depression, uh, this is uh, with regards to psychosis a meta-analysis showing that CBT is effective uh, treatment, but there is one conclusion here at the end that an intervention on psychosis that does not consider an integrative approach could miss a potential effective component of the treatment. So as I said before, there is an, a growing acknowledgement that there, there is no one approach to psychotherapy that can provide all needs and can promote all diverse outcomes that we are aiming to. Um, also, uh, with specific uh, des desirable outcomes, such as decreasing self-stigma. So this is a systematic review and meta-analysis showing uh, a clear benefits of a different psychotherapeutic approach to decrease self-stigma, all which include uh, narration, narration techniques, psychoeducation, and cognitive. So all can consider um, uh, integrity. Okay. This is an ongoing project in my lab led by uh, my PhD student, Yael here. We are doing a meta-analysis on the effectiveness of psychotherapy in an inpatient setting. 
And on the left, you can see the effect of uh, uh, RCTs, uh, which were conducted in inpatient setting. On the right, there's a non-control trial. There is a clear effect, and there is a clear trend, which we are still working on the data, but we can see a, a trend toward more effectiveness of integrative approach. And I, I mean, for me, it makes sense that in an inpatient setting, the need for integration is even greater than in community setting. The multiple needs are, are clear. So how do we assess, if we want to assess those different elements, critical elements or outcome in psychotherapy? Let's talk about how we do this research. We have different designs, possible design with the gold standard of RCT. Um, and then, we can decide what we want to measure. Do we measure outcome? And if we measure outcome, which outcome are we interested in? Are we interested in symptom reduction? Are we interested in other outcome, more subjective one? Are we interested in process? We want to measure mediators of change. And if we want to measure mediator of change, do we want to trace dyadic elements? such as therapeutic alliance, or such a more experiential elements in the session as emotion experiencing insight. Do we want to measure predictors of change? Okay, which can be illness related, patient characteristics, therapist characteristics. Or do we want to measure also moderator of change? Okay, who can benefit more from a certain kind of intervention? And also here, we can use the personal level or the addict level, and we can assess synchronicity, for example, between therapist and client okay, on different measurements. I'll try to provide an example later on if I have the time. So I think that when we want to do a new project on psychotherapy effectiveness, if we keep this slide in mind, we can formalize the research question and then we'll think on the method, which is the next slide. But this is for us to conceptualize, what are we examining? What do we want to check? And just to show that there is a lot of emphasis these days on processes. This is a special issue uh, published uh, a few months ago in the Journal of Counseling Psychology, all devoted to the exploration of processes of change. So the focus, uh, is uh, more balanced these days between outcome and processes. And now when, if we go, if we have those uh, quest different possible question in mind, which perspective do we measure? Do we want to check what the patient is reporting us? Therapist reports? Maybe we use an observer reports of tracing any change? We can use also technology-based assessment. Okay, and also biological marker. People can assess oxytocin or other hormones to trace emotional change during a session. And we can also do different combinations of those perspectives. As I mentioned before, we can assess, for example, synchronicity and check whether therapist and patient, if they agree on certain aspect in the therapy, how this relates to outcome. Okay. Um, in the last year, we published uh, together with uh, Paul Isaac from the States and Stephen de Jong from the Netherlands, uh, we, we worked with an uh, American sample of uh, people who uh, went to psychotherapy, and we showed how the synchronicity on therapeutic alliance between client and therapist was a predictor of outcome. So it wasn't only the, the level of therapeutic alliance that was reported by either patient or therapist, by, but the synchronicity between their reports. So I'm going back and showing again those uh, three elements. And if we take the research question that we conceptualize and we take different perspective, different methods that we want to use, so how do we measure specifically those? How do we assess reflection? How do we assess narrative, narration, intervention in a therapy? How do we assess the relationship component in the therapy? So 
So try to briefly uh, um, elaborate on this with uh, an example. It's an ongoing study that we have in my lab. We have uh, here in uh, my department in bar -Ilan University, we have a community clinic and we are conducting uh, those two PhD students, uh, Adi and Libby are in charge of this uh, project, impressive project, if I may say. I'm Proud of it. So we, it's a delayed RCT of metacognition insight and reflection therapy. It's a psychotherapeutic approach uh, um, developed by Paul Isaacer and Reed Cleon. And we are, uh, I'll, I'll describe two uh, um, rather small angles from this uh, big project. And it's ongoing, we're still collecting data. So for now, we have only 50 clients randomly assigned either to treatment group or to delayed treatment control group. What delayed treatment control group means is that after the treatment, after the um, um, waiting time has passed, they are receiving the treatment. So we do have two groups to compare, but we also have all the group as a whole to do a session by session analysis. So we also, we, we do collect pre, post and follow up data, but we also collect session by session measures. That means that at the beginning and at the end of each session, the patient and the therapist have on the computer a few questions and we track it weekly on a weekly basis. A few of the outcomes that we have are metacognition, which I meant we'll try to mention now, metacognition, quality of life, symptoms, we try to address the self-experience by measuring self-stigma, self-clarity. We also assess emotion regulation and social cognition. Um, and with other uh, mediators such as therapeutic alliance and emotional experience. So one project, and this is just to get an impression from the sample, uh, unexpectedly, although we, did, we randomized the sample, we have a baseline difference in one of the metacognition, metacognition domains, which is mastery for the benefit of the control group. And this is the flow chart of the project. that You can get an impression of what we are doing. And the first project was led by Adi and we did uh, check out uh, elements, specific elements that the therapist use in the, in the session, how they promote therapeutic alliance and short-term outcomes. Short-term outcome is the subjective well-being that the patient report after each session. Um, so what we have here pre-post, we have an improvement in two subscales of the metacognition. So people who were uh, after this treatment had higher ability to think about themselves and to use this knowledge in order to cope with different challenges. We also showed that in this kind of therapy, in the Mary therapy, we have different elements so we can check the feasibility, uh, sorry, not the feasibility, the fidelity, how the therapist is using those different elements. And we showed that when the therapist introduced his own mind, which means that he share with the client his thoughts and feelings with regard to what's going on in the session on what his thoughts about the client. When he does that, then there is an improvement in outcome. The, the uh, clients report higher subjective well-being. And the more therapeutic alliance, so sorry, a minute. And when there is a re joint reflection on the progress in therapy, then there higher the therapeutic alliance, which is reported, which makes sense. If we talk with our clients about the progress, it, me it means we are more connected. We have, a same, we have a, a joint aim, a joint target. We want to make things better. And a pro project we are working on now, we didn't publish this yet. We are focusing on emotional experiencing in psychotherapy in the treatment level and in session by session level. Um, we are uh, targeting how the emotional experience within, within a session, how they are associated with outcome variables, 
and whether also specific elements uh, promote the emotional experience. What we uh, can see for now is that um, I can see all my slides. We see that emotion experience within a session, emotion expression, when the client express is emotion and emotion regulation are all connected to uh, well more well-being okay so although we have a, a, a small sample here of clients with this analysis we have a, a relatively large number of sessions and this is a, a per session analysis okay so we have 563 sessions that were analyzed showing those effects we also have effect on a post-treatment measure showing that emotion experience is related to improvement in, uh, uh, in mastery, which is the, uh, also uh, an important domain of metacognition um, referring to the ability to use reflective knowledge to cope with different challenges in life. Okay? And this is within a session how the different elements that the uh, therapists use how they are related to emotional experience and we see here that there again when the therapist share his thoughts when there is attention to progress and when the therapist try to stimulate mastery all these are highly related to emotional experience okay so the main finding of this pro of this project on emotional experience, we can see that greater emotional experience expression and regulation within a session were associated with better session outcome. In the treatment level, greater emotional experience was associated with improvement in metacognitive mastery. And the presence of one merit element, the introduction of therapist mind, was related to more emotional experience within a given session. To summarize and conclude, I think that hopefully we showed in this short talk that psychotherapy is a relevant treatment uh, for people with serious mental illnesses. And although, and, and it's also, it's, it's, I think it's largely relates to the question you raised, Vivian, before. I mean, it's an ethical question and it's a question of where we put our resources. And if we see that research show that it's cost effective to provide psychotherapy to people with serious mental illnesses, why is it it's so popular? And it's, it, and it's not. Uh, it's not the first line of treatment uh, for, for people with serious mental illnesses. I hope we I also succeeded in showing that integrative approaches are most effective. Okay, and especially those who emphasize reflection, narration, and interpersonal elements and also are, are flexible enough for the assimilation of techniques from other approaches when they are needed. And the research on effectiveness of this approach should include assessment of both process and outcome using as much as we can different perspective for cross-validation, but also for the interest of understanding uh, synchronicity and agreement on different aspects in the therapy. Um, this is people or, or dear uh, colleagues and friends, and in the picture, this is Paul Isaacer, who, and in a workshop he did with my uh, students on uh, the metacognitive-based uh, psychotherapy. Thank you.